So the front splitter is made out of two sheets of 10 millimeter Lumalite that were bonded together by Paul and I. This is a aluminum tube. Uh, I don't three quarter know. inch. Yeah, three quarter inch. Three quarter inch diameter. And these are actually, were 90 degree bends, because that's all they made it, uh, that we found with a quick Google search. Air cut it at 45 degrees. And then we welded and it and sanded her down. And that's how she looks. So she's got a nice leading edge, even though it's aluminite. Um, looking back, we might not use aluminite again on a front splitter, but it does work for this specific case. We had to kind of support it more than we thought we would uh, with the new addition of the support rods on both sides. Basically, because when we cut the diffuser holes to mount the diffusers in, it made it a lot more weak on the outside, which makes sense. And looking back, we probably could have realized that, but until you actually do it, you don't know. The, and then, yeah, so this is this is how it's mounted primarily. Um, steel to the crash beam, uh, aluminum mounts on top of the splitter. Um, basically, you take out that one bolt and the entire thing can move forward and down. Uh, it's kind of like a quick release um, front splitter ordeal. And then this plate is just to um, improve some load transfer, uh, basically just give it a larger area so that it doesn't crush the Alumalite, which is basically what Alumalite does. It crushes. Yep, which is one reason we probably wouldn't use it for a splitter again, but... I mean, it, it works. works. It works. It's just not... It's not as good as what we wanted. Yeah, I think we're a little bit more picky than some people are when that's, that's probably we do accurate. some stuff. Um, so, the big thing up front that people will definitely notice is the front diffusers. So each side has three of them. These are what front diffusers are. Um, basically the first two start off wide and narrow up as it goes in. Um, this one's gonna be, the most inner one's gonna be the one doing most of the work, basically because it has the cleanest path out. So it goes up into the wheel well and we try to make it so it comes out really well. It's also the largest and because it's the largest, it does create the most downforce. Where it creates most of the downforce is gonna be on the throat of the diffuser, which is the leading edge, which is right around here. Um, it basically works the splitter hard. Then we have the two outer ones, which hit the wheel. People always wonder, does it hurt performance hitting the wheel? Yes, it does a little bit, but um, you only have so much real estate to work with, and so you kinda of have to make do with what, what you have. Um, and these were specifically designed to help with performance in turns in, in any sort of yaw conditioning. And these were also designed specifically for this car, specifically for the rear wing that we produce, the dual element. So everything is very specific to this car. Um, yes, it could probably go on another car, but it probably would not perform as well or to the same extent. Yeah, we wouldn't know exactly how it works. We found out with testing uh, front diffuser designs that um, a lot of it's gonna depend on the overall setup with how well it performs, ride heights, where the car is uh, statically and dynamically on the track. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, and obviously since it's mounted with our rear wing, the whole goal is to balance the whole thing out. It also has a full floor with rear diffuser which I know that's not part of the splitter, but that does aid in the front splitter. So it all is designed to work together as an assembly. And then one of the other main features is our end plates. Um, they are, basically they stick up, I think like 60 millimeters off the top surface. And they hang down a little bit below on the bottom surface. Basically that's to help keep uh, spillage um, improves the efficiency on the underside of the splitter. Um, you could argue that it keeps high pressure on the top side, but really that's not doing much of the work. It's basically there to make the bottom side of the splitter work harder. Those are also made out of aluminite, uh, six millimeter. Cool. All right, so this is the manufacturing model of the front splitter. You can kind of see a big overview of what's going on right here in the center that it would be our mounting system and this is all designed for manufacturing specifically 
Uh, these components were made out of aluminum and steel and welded together. Um, you can see that we're working around the scan data um, and you can kind of see how everything's connected to the crash beam uh, that got welded up um, and that's physically mounted to the car. And then as we go to the underside you can see how that also mounts. You can see the diffusers. Those are our spacers on the bottom that mounted the actual splitter. You can see that the splitter is made of two pieces of alumilite and then it's a front aluminum tube it goes all the way around. Um, it was all designed in CAD 100% how we manufactured it. The holes on the top are holes that we drilled for actually riveting the two pieces together. We also bonded them together. So we did a mechanical mount plus um, using bond agent and it held it together pretty well. Now we're looking at the front of the FRS BRZ with the CFD. Uh, so you'll notice we're looking at coefficient of pressure red being high, purple and blue being low. Um, that low pressure is going to be pushing going, um, best way to explain this. So red on the top of the splitter is going to be pushing the splitter down. Blue on the hood is going to be pulling it up. So when you hear us talking about like the factory car uh, creates lift or the body creates lift, this is where you can start seeing it. So think if you took away that front splitter off the front and then you were just looking at the front of the car, the only places that would be creating downforce is the bottom edge of that bumper, which wouldn't be a whole lot, um, three quarters of the windshield, but then the very top of the car, you can see it just a little bit, but you can see that deep purple um, and then also dark blue. And then on the hood, all the way to the outside of the fenders, you have light blue and darker blue, all of that is creating lift, which is wanting to pull the car upwards. And that's what we're fighting with our aero parts. You want to make more force pushing it down, which is then what creates down force. The next picture is a um, what we call an ISO view. It's basically a 45 degree view from like a front or rear. Um, it's normal CAD word using CAD software is a lot, but um, an ISO view. Looking at the side, this is where you can um, see more on the top of the roof where it's creating lift. Um, and then also on the top of the fenders, you can see a little bit more what's going on. Um, you can see the high pressure on the wing. You can see the low pressure on the bottom side of the wing. Um, all of that's very visible. Basically where it's gray is where it's neutral, so you have that usually in transition regions from um, like red, yellow to blue. See the high pressure region around the side window on the back side of it uh, from that a little bit on the rear wheel. Just some of these little areas are noticeable when you start looking at the pictures and seeing what's going on with everything. So the next picture is of some streamlines. So streamlines you can use to visualize the flow field. You can see coming off from the bottom and then the front end plate, you can see the vortice forming out of there. You can see um, the air coming out of the fender wells just in front of that end plate coming out and then going to the back of the car. So you can kind of see how the airflow flows from the front and how it makes its way to the back. See how it's getting sucked back behind the car and going up. That's because the rear wing, because it creates a lot of down, oh, it's actually, because you have a lot of low pressure, it creates a lot of downforce. Well, the wing creates a lot of downforce, so all of that low pressure is pulling that air from the side back inward and up. And that's kind of cool to see. You can see the airflow. All right, so in this image, we can see the streamlines from the side of the car. This is really good for visualizing how the flow is going down. So right now, what we're looking at is the airflow. Basically, if you took a section of the airflow down the center of the car, you can see how the rear wing and the diffuser interact, you can see how uh, the velocity of the air speeds up as it's going underneath the front splitter. That's what creates that low pressure region and pulls the front of the car down. You can see how the airflow follows the rear diffuser up. It's being helped with the rear wing. And you can definitely see the airflow on the rear wing shooting it up. And the next picture that's even more visible because we basically took the same view and just skewed the car up. And you can see really how high that rear wing shoots that air up. 
And now we're looking at the bottom side of the car. We're looking at how uh, the streamlines flow with the main um, front diffuser. So that main one is the inner one. It's the biggest one. Uh, it allows the most air to get out of the fender well. Uh, so you can actually flow more air through there. So it's working the hardest out of all of them. And you can really tell by looking at the low pressure region in front of that diffuser, you can see how purple that is. Um, so it's really, really easy to see kind of what's going on there. Uh, the streamlines help show where that airflow is going, how it's going into the fender well and then it's coming out. You can see basically a dead water region behind the front tire in that area also being trapped. And then the next streamline shows it in the center diffuser you can see how the airflow is acting on there. It's a little bit more dirty. It's still going into the fender line a little bit. It's also hitting the front tire. It's still coming out, but it's a lot messier. That's what. That's why that one isn't as efficient. We've been asked, um, why, why do you direct diffuser at the front tire? Does it hurt performance? Is it as good? The answer is it's not as good but you only have so much real estate to work with, and if you need to make more front downforce, you just have to direct air at the front tire. It's not the most efficient way possible to make downforce, but when you engineer a car like this and you design it, you have to you have to take good with bad. Sometimes you just need it to make the downforce number. It really doesn't hurt, like increase drag that much by directing more air to the front tire but it allows you to make more downforce. And that was the goal with this car, is to be able to make more front downforce. And then the other streamlines, you can see how it's hitting the outer diffuser. That one, you can see it's directing air a little bit more out of the front wheel a little bit more. You can kind of see a little bit more what's going on. Some air still goes inside, but not a whole lot. It's mainly going around the front tire. And then this is just a general um, underbody shot of the rear, of not just the rear diffuser, but the whole underbody. Uh, but we're going to look at the rear diffuser right now. So you can see the main areas on the diffuser that's making the low pressure is at the throat of the diffuser, which is right in front of the strake. So the throat is where the incline goes up, and you can definitely see that that is dark blue and some areas are purple. You might also notice that the not everything is exactly the same from the top to bottom. Uh, it is not modeled in symmetry, so this is... This is a full car analysis. You can see on the rear trailing edge of the diffuser where we have that big radius at the trailing edge, you can see that low pressure region. So one of the um, big reasons we do that, it helps create more downforce on the diffuser with the same given real estate. It works really, really well. You don't actually have to have fully attached flow on that for it to make downforce. And then if we go back to look at the front, you can see we don't have a uh, center diffuser in the front because we didn't it would have been very expensive to make something like that and it wasn't feasible for this project so you can see like there's some low pressure in that center region but not as much as there could be um, that zero for the pressure coefficient basically right in line with the front tires that is two different angles coming together so the flat bottom is and it has some flat uh, so when the car is sitting statically with no rake, that is flat with the ground. That splitter is angling down towards that, so the splitter is sitting lower than the center of the car, and that's what's causing that spot right there. You can see how the rear tires are affecting the underbody also as it's slightly gray, slightly light blue. That's the interaction with the tires, um, and it's very noticeable. You can see that, but you see how much blue is on the underbody that is that's where you can make a lot of downforce off a flat bottom by setting it upright having a good splitter to feed it and a uh, diffuser to um, also help feed air through there you can actually create a good amount of downforce with just a basic flat underbody